Welcome back to the channel today, guys. Before I start our next video, I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight for you guys watching and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So today, I'm dropping a coupon, $200 off any 24-hour rental on a Lamborghini here at Royalty Exotic Cars. So that means for a Huracan Spider, you're getting almost a 20% discount. That's pretty epic. So over the next seven days, get your bookings in. So that's gonna expire. All right, let's start the next video right now. Follow me outside of the Jeep. We're gonna get ready to roll. All right, guys, the coupon code for that is gonna be Lamborghini YouTube. So when you guys call in to book, make sure you tell them that you wanna book with the coupon code Lamborghini YouTube. Let's start this video out today talking a little bit about my backstory, right? So you know that I used to be a cable guy and uh, well, it was a great time in my life. And as a cable guy, my favorite car that I could afford was the Lotus Exige. Now Lotus is back in the day when I was a cable guy, 2012, 13, during the recession where, I mean, 25, $30,000 cars. So nothing crazy, but at the same time, it was the most amazing car I ever had. It was light and nimble and it was powerful. I ended up doing a single turbo build on it, making about 450 wheel horsepower. And that was a true car, guys, car. You had to drive it. There was no traction control, no ABS, no nothing to help you out. Once I started the supercar business and royalty exotic cars, all the cars became very technical and, and they're masterpieces in their own self. But at the same time, it, it, they just lose a little bit of their soul. When you're a real car driver, and a, I don't want to call myself a race car driver, but I like to drive the cars and I really like that soul that they have. So with the Bugatti, it was a, a pinnacle. It's a dream. I mean, it was incredible. It was amazing. But the Bugatti is like a GTR to me. It, it, it's heavy, it's fast, but it doesn't feel like you're going fast. I converted it to two wheel drive and it's freaking amazing. It's such a better car in two wheel drive, but I don't know how long that that car is gonna stay relevant. And in my mind, it's gonna be relevant forever. But today's video is about the succession. Yeah, I might put the Bugatti for sale on eBay. I don't know, who knows? That car will take probably a year to sell if I ever end up getting a buyer to sell it too. But, um, what we're gonna do today is something new, exciting, and special. The Hennessy Venom GT was a dream car of mine forever. Unfortunately, the $1.2 million price tag was very far out of my reach for my entire life, even up to today. It's a $2 million, or a million and a half dollar Lotus. But I really think I can build something similar, maybe better. So today, what we're gonna do is pick up someone from the airport that is uh, um, Triton Engineering. He's one of my friends. And uh, I've been talking to him online for a while and we've been discussing a little bit of a project idea that I've had. So we flew him out here for him to check out and kind of go over what I think is possible. So if he gives us the A-OK, -okay, we're gonna start one of the most amazing builds I think anybody's ever done. So the plane just landed. Uh, we're gonna go over there and pick up. His name is Igor. He's the founder of Titan Engineering in Southern California. Now, what he does is he does some extremely metal fabrication. So that's a little hint to what I've got going on. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. So we're headed back to the shop. I'm gonna show him what I've got going on. And uh, we're gonna see if this is all possible. It's a beautiful 118 degrees in Vegas. We're gonna head back in the shop and we're gonna show you what we're working on. We're here in the garage. Igor's here and I'm gonna show you what my Lotus looks like right now, okay? So let's turn around, and there you go. It's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so this Lotus has been torn apart 200 times already, because I can't really decide the direction I'm gonna go. But if you guys look around, you can see I've done some work on it. We've got Penske shocks, got all the uh, uh, brake proportioning system, no interior work done yet. In the back, I've done a uh, built 
K20. It's got everything you can do to this motor. We did a mil spec harness. I even powder coated the subframe black. Got some high quality axles here. And now I do have a turbo manifold made and everything. But when I thought about what I'm actually building, is that truly what I wanted? No. My dream was a Hennessy Venom GT when I was a kid, younger, you know? I always loved the Bugatti, but then uh, the, the Hennessy Venom GT was always that raw race car, 1200 horsepower Lotus, are you crazy? That sounds in insane. So a couple of days ago, I got the inclining to say, you know what, let's stop this project here. Me and Jesse work on this every once in a while, and let's start something insane. So give me about two minutes to talk to Igor. See if this is possible. Let me right back. So we're good. All right, I just got done talking to him and we've decided that what my idea is, is completely possible. Expensive, yes, but possible. So go ahead and look right there. These are the new tires this car is gonna need. So if that tells you anything about what this car is gonna be, if it needs some of those, it's gonna be fast, really fast. Uh, that little Hennessy Venom GT, I got a little model that I bought. It's been sitting on my desk for a little while. Uh, I'm looking to turn that car upside down. So I hope I can get this done within the end of the year and uh, show kind of the world that I can build a car too because I know everybody wants to see the Bugatti driving around everywhere, something that I bought. But I think we can make a car faster, better, and more fun than the Bugatti in about six months. So we're going to send this to his shop to get that new motor put in here. All right, so Jesse and I are over here at the back of the Gallardo. Now, as you guys know, this is my first Lamborghini that I ever purchased for Royalty Exotic Cars. I will never sell this car, but it sits on display at the Link Promenade, so kind of doesn't really serve much more of a purpose to sit there. So why should we leave this perfectly good V10 Lamborghini engine in it? So that's when I got to thinking, let's put it in the Lotus. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny, but it's true. So the guy that came yesterday, he said that we are good to go to build the chassis to support this power, not alone just the 560 horsepower that this car has, but to twin turbo this car and then make it 1500 horsepower and put that in the Lotus. So I want to build the biggest, baddest Lotus Ever. Now, I know Hennessy did it before and they put a Corvette motor in it, but that's a million dollar car with a Corvette motor. No shame in that, but why, if we could put a Lamborghini engine in it with some twin turbos, we can get that exotic sound. Jesse, the videos that I showed you yesterday, pretty what, epic. What, pretty is epic. It, what does it sound like to hear a twin turbo Lamborghini scream? It's, uh, can't describe it, man. It's, I would say some stuff, but probably can't say it on camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I also showed you those videos of the Hennessy Venom doing the world record, 270 miles an hour. Now that was before Koenigsegg recently broke it, but the Hennessy Venom GT was the fastest car in the world for a very long time. And I think it still is the fastest from zero to 200 miles an hour in 12.1 seconds. So I think we have a good opportunity to build an amazing car just like that, but do it just the 2018 version because twin turbo Lamborghini technology has come a long way from where it came from in 2009 when they first started doing it. So I think that um, with uh, our new engineering skills, our new friends that we've met in the uh, ch chassis department, and a little bit of balls, we're gonna build a badass car. So, we're getting ready to pull the motor out. We got a strap here. There's points right here on all four sides of the motor. We got the tranny side. This is center. This is where you got all the weight. So we're gonna put one here in the center of the engine. 
We're gonna put on the transmission side so it doesn't teeter totter as we're coming out. Two minutes later, it should be out right now. And I know you guys look at this like, what the hell are they doing? They're pulling a Gallardo motor out with some ratchet straps. But that's how real shit gets done. So if you guys want to learn real shit, talk to Jesse. Just leave a comment down below. Yeah. All right, guys, so don't let all this fluid and all this dirt and everything grime scare you because when you pull a motor out, you make a big ass mess. So as Jesse knows, pulling motors can be uh, kind of tedious. It's only about Very one tedious. No, but listen, it's one o'clock in the afternoon right now. Jesse and uh, David did this in about, what, three, four hours? You started this, nine this morning, nine o'clock. So did you take a lunch? Nope. So five hours, basically straight up, all said in four hours all said and done so that's really really good time to get a lambo motor out and um i think that uh this is gonna be a great project i'm so excited i cannot even tell you how excited i am i think we got one problem though i think this whole engine is probably bigger than the lotus <laughs> <laughs> well uh we're getting my dodge truck right now from the shop a pallet to put this on we're gonna take it back to our shop we're gonna clean it back up uh, the Gallardo is currently getting wrapped by Kevin, so he was unwrapping it. So that's why we did this here, because you know, Complete Automotive Repair Services, which we call CARS, uh, has been a great partner of ours for a very long time. So we bring them um, some of the most amazing you know, work we can give them, uh, the big jobs like this, because we don't have a lot of the big jacks to remove transmissions and stuff sometimes, so we borrow them from here. But at the end of the day, it's just an amazing teamwork effort to get this car out four hours in flat and to get that car ready, prepped to be delivered to California to the engineering department to get this cage going. It's pretty epic. There's a lot of ideas and projects that he likes to start that I really kind of don't want to do. <laughs> this is probably the best one he's ever thought of. So this is going to be exciting and fun. So. And don't forget, we're going to take this motor apart and the tranny apart and we're going to build it. So next step is to get the internals, the head studs, the billet gears and all that stuff put in here. All right, so um, we'll see that soon. So everybody's mind should be blown because yes, I'm putting that Lambo engine in one of these cars. So we had Igor come out and check out the chassis of the Lotus, right? But the lo be before I, I want to give a disclaimer, my Lotus is literally slammed on the ground. So don't let the height of these cars fool you. But I just really didn't feel like the Lambo motor was the right motor to go inside the Lotus. Now John Hennessy did the V8 twin turbo Corvette engine, but it's already been done, man. He did it and I don't really want to step on that because I'm a car guy and I've got respect for what he built because it's fucking amazing, but it's not what I built, right? So. Jesse and me had a conversation, right? And we were thinking, what cool car could handle this engine, but is someone's never been touched before? So Jesse, tell me, come around here and tell me what made the decision to go to this right here. Now, if anybody doesn't know what this is, it's an Alfa Romeo 4C. Car's pretty much brand new on the scene for like two years. So tell me about this car and tell me why we picked this. So. This car, one I'm pretty thing. Sure, I'm pretty sure, just right here. Yeah, let's just go look. I was gonna say, this is the number one reason why we chose the Alpha, because that right there. If you guys can tell, there's full carbon fiber tub, and pretty much the only thing we're gonna use on this car is the carbon fiber tub. That's it. That's it. So when you look at this, this entire subframe tomorrow, we're taking this car to Triton Engineering in California, where they're gonna build the support for this motor to sit right here. That's gonna be a twin turbo, 14, 1500 horsepower V10, six speed gated manual in this car. So as you can see, the Lotus, the width of the Lotus standard is nine inches thinner than this right here. But if you look at all the extra room, you've got a lot more visibility. You've got a lot better platform to start on. 
Obviously the black from here is all coming off. It's all gonna be custom. The front, we're probably gonna keep most of the stuff. We're gonna redo the body work, obviously, because, sorry, Alpha, it didn't look that good, but my opinion, all right? But we're gonna keep AC in the car. Yeah, so that was one of the have things AC. we had to get rid of on the Lotus, but we're gonna keep it. Now, why did I bring this 335, 3020 out here? Because this is the tire that I hope to put on the car. I really wanted to cross my fingers and put a 355, but the problem with the 355 is the rolling diameter for the front would have to be a lot wider than I think we could fit on there. So I think we're gonna go with the 255 and a 335 in the back. So cross our fingers, make sure that's gonna happen. If I get the 355, we'll have traction for days. Even with 1500 horsepower and 2500 pounds, we're still gonna make this happen. We're gonna load it up in our brand new Gym Glow trailer, which we just got. Juan literally just drilled that thing in. We got this trailer not only for, let me come over here and look at it. Mario, you're always in the wrong space, Mario. You know you're what I'm saying? Like, do you see? I'm following. Like I'm trying to move around. I think your route's better. That's why yeah. you're not athletic. I'm not athletic, sorry. All right, just walk in here, because it's really windy, but you can see we've got a seven degree approach angle. Why, Tony, why are you wearing a tie? <laughs> this is this is why we don't get anything done over here. All right. <laughs> okay, let's get back to work. All right. It's beautiful. We've got our tie spot. We've got Atwood pulling up in his brand new M6. Everybody's trying to show off today. It's Thursday. You know, weekends coming, paydays tomorrow. Everybody's happy. We've got a built-in winch, cabinets, everything. This guy's serious. He's ruining our video. Anyway. Uh, look, the trailer's amazing. It looks great. We're gonna put that Alpha, that engine in here, get it ready, and Jesse and I are bringing it to California tomorrow. Stay tuned for one of the most epic car builds I've ever seen in my life. So I want to go over just a little bit of the scope of work we're about to do with Igor over here at Triton, right? So Jesse has already explained to you what we've done, taking the whole car apart. We've cleaned everything out. And now we've got to think about how we're going to put that motor, that motor in this car without any of this. So all this is going away. So kind of go over your process, Igor, just a little bit. And let me know what it takes to get this done. Um, well, first, we're gonna obviously junk the whole uh, rear subframe. Um, we're gonna get a 3D scanner uh, in place. We're gonna scan the whole back of the car um, and then we'll place the engine in there and kind of just um, start designing new parts around um, the room we have around the engine um, with all new you know, billet suspension, new coilovers. Uh, and then after that, we'll start doing the turbo kit, mounting intercoolers, radiators, all that stuff. So you heard him say new suspension. So what that means is he literally has to design the car from scratch, from the back half over. And actually, we, we're gonna walk around the front in a second. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do in the front. But if you really think about this, you gotta be so smart. I mean, like incredibly smart to understand geometry, right? Suspension geometry is insane. The car's got like the wheels have to move and all the different angles, the road debris and all the stuff that has to go on when a car drives down the road. He's gotta think about all those scenarios and make sure that this works. Not only that this works, but it works at 250 miles an hour because that's kind of my goal. I mean, shit, I'd like to go 300, but I'm not trying to set it too high, right? But at least at 250, I feel confident, you know? Um, over here in the front, let's take a look at this because this is the part where to me, it seems the most confusing, right? So like you have ABS, you've got radiators, you've got all the electrical, the crash structure. This has already been designed by multi-billion dollar company like you know alfa romeo how can we do it better or shit how can we even do what they do but that's his expertise and that's what he's going to get done so he's going to design 
different arms up front, different shocks, so we move the wheels in a different location so we can run a 265 front tire, maybe even a bigger 275 front tire. The Bugatti actually runs 265, so 265 should be safe. But um, I'm excited. We're gonna be back down here in about, how, what do you think, a week and a half, two weeks? Yeah, so about a week. We're gonna have the car scanned. And now if you guys remember from the uh, Scrape Armor guys, when we were scanning the front of my Bugatti, they showed how they kind of designed the 3D rendering in a computer of what the car looks like. So that's gonna go to give us our body panels, all of our uh, mounting points and the dimensions of the car so we can get the car exactly perfect. So I'm excited. We're gonna come back in about a week and a half, two weeks. We're gonna film that. We're gonna show you the process of building this car step by step. So today is the close of step one. We'll be back with you in two weeks for step two.